our casuarina tree. Toru Dutt has written this poem and she does not say my casuarina tree. She says it, our casuarina tree, which means it is not just her who is connected with this tree, but many more. Yes, we'll find out in today's capsule summary. Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walat. Today's very beautiful poem under discussion, under UPHESE syllabus, and of course, a very important poem in colleges, in universities, is Toru, that's our casuarina tree. People call it casuarina also, casuarina also. I call it casuarina, casuarina. Published in the year 1881 in Toru, that's poetry collection called Ancient Ballads and Legends of Hindustan. Style of this poem is Our Casuarina Tree is a nature poem and it is an autobiographical poem because it explores Toru Dutt's nostalgia, her feeling of gain and loss over the years passed by. You should know Toru Dutt was born in Kolkata, but very soon she left India with her family. They went to England. Then she studied in France and Italy. She returned to India. She died very young. Before her death, she saw the immature death of her brother and sister. She actually saw a lot of suffering in her short span of life. Okay. So that is why this casuarina tree is so much connected to her because under this tree, she played with her brother and sister. This tree might be there when she was in her childhood in Kolkata and she was playing there, she was spending her youth there, right? So this tree depicts a strong connection. This poem depicts a strong connection with nature, just like the poems of the Romantic era. And this casuarina tree is casuarina tree is depicted as a symbolic representation of poets past memories. Okay, with this, we are in a good position to begin. See, now listen, there are total five stanzas. I have kept one stanza in one slide. Okay, although explanation can go beyond one slide, but this is one stanza. Okay, look to your left. This is one stanza. First, I will read the entire stanza and then explanation will follow. Let's read the poem together aloud with me. Like a huge python winding round and round, the rugged trunk indented deep with scars, up to its very summit near the stars. A creeper climbs, in whose embraces bound, no other tree could live. But gallantly, the giant wears a scarf, and flowers are hung in crimson clusters, all the boughs among. Whereon all days are gathered bird and bee, and oft at night the garden overflows with one sweet song that seems to have no close, sung darkling from our tree while men repose. Wow. So, Toru is fondly remembering the casuarina tree from her childhood days. What does she say? She says that this tree is very old. It has a rough trunk and it is marked with timeless scars. Okay, there are scars which are timeless, which means that the casuarina tree is very old. The poet, that is Toru Dutt, says that a big python-like creeper, look at those pythons photo I have kept here, I've shown here. A big python-like creeper, creeper is like a wine, a bale in Hindi. This creeper creeps round and round our casuarina tree from bottom till top, like reaching till the stars. This wine climbs so high that it touches the stars in the sky. But if it would have been any other tree, this wine or creeper would have engulfed it, swallowed that tree. But, but this is not any other tree. This is the poet's tree. This is the casuarina tree. So such a giant wine otherwise would not have let any other tree survive. But our brave and gallant casuarina tree wears this creeper just like a scarf. Can you imagine? There is this big casuarina tree around which there is a creeper, a python-like creeper. And the tree wears this creeper like a scarf around its body, around its trunk. Here the theme is bravery. So awesome. Can you imagine the personification? <laughs> now, 
among the branches of trees, that is in this, you know, creeper, rich red flowers bloom. And along with these rich red crimson flowers, there is more beautiful things to see, that is birds and bees. Birds and bees also gather around the garden, around the area of the poet's house. And then Toru docks of the darkness of the night. In the darkness of the night, our casuarina tree sings an eternal sweet song. Here, darkling represents a beetle, sung darkling from our tree. So basically, the darkling beetles from the casuarina tree, they sing an eternal sweet song while the humans are deep asleep. So what is the theme of the first stanza? It is a fond memory of the casuarina tree, describing the casuarina tree, right? It's bravery. Easy. With this first stanza is done. Second stanza. Let's read the entire stanza together. There are 11 lines in it. When first my casement is wide open thrown at dawn, my eyes delighted on it rest. Sometimes, and most in winter, on its crest, a grey baboon sits statue-like alone, watching the sun rise. While on lower boughs, his puny offspring leap about and play. And far and near, coquilas hail the day. And to their pastures, wend our sleepy cows. And in the shadow, on the broad tank cast by that hoar tree, so beautiful and vast, the water lilies spring like snow and mast. Understand, it's very easy. Listen to the explanation. Torudat says that it is early morning. I wake up, I open the window of my tree and voila, there stands the beautiful casuarina tree. My eyes are delighted with the sight of this tree. Then the poet continues saying that mostly in winter and also otherwise also in other seasons also, a grey coloured baboon sits on, on top of our casuarina tree and this baboon watches the sunrise. Whereas the baboon sits on top like a statue, its little baby is down on the lower branches and the little baby of the baboon is jumping and playing. Do you see the contrast? Mama baboon or baboon, we don't know, is it papa or mama? Baboon, the parent, sits at the top of the tree like a statue. Whereas the baby baboon is leaping and playing at the bottom. Do you see the opposite, the contrast? Can you imagine it? <laughs> Further, the poet says that the nightingales, that is the coquilas, they welcome the day. Remember, it is dawn. It is the starting of a new, new day. Whereas cows because they are still sleepy, but they have been woken up because they have to go grazing, they have to go to the pastures. So the sleepy cows are waking up and moving towards the pastures. Further, the poet says that the white water lilies blossom like snow. There is basically a big water tank and this water tank gets the shadow from the casuarina tree. In this water tank, there are many water lilies because these water lilies are white and they are beautiful and so many, they look like snow. The theme is fond memory of the events around the casuarina tree. First stanza was about casuarina tree. Second stanza describes the event around the casuarina tree early in the morning. Second stanza done. Let's move to the third stanza of 11 lines. How many stanzas are there? Five. Third we are on. Let's read the poem. But not because of its magnificence, dear is the casuarina to my soul. Beneath it, we have played, though ears may roll. O oh, sweet companions, loved with love intense, for your sakes shall the tree be ever dear. Blent with your images, it shall arise in memory, till the hot tears blind mine eyes. What is that dirge-like murmur that I hear, <laughs> like the sea breaking on a shingle beach? It is the tree's lament, an eerie speech that haply to the unknown land may reach. Now, 
Toru that continues and says that I am fond of the casuarina tree, not only because it is giant, brave, grandiose, generous, or it sings. No, I am very fond of casuarina tree because of the playful, the beautiful memories that are attached with this tree. What memories is Toru that talking about? The brother and sister and her. She along with her companions, that is her late brother, her late sister, played beneath the tree. These dear ones who are very dear to her are no more. And their memories bring flashes of blinding tears to poet's eyes. How it is to lose a dear one? The tears are hot. They are hot burning tears. Like flashes of anger, there are flashes of tear. Here the theme is loss and sadness beyond. Just then the poet says that I hear a lamentful murmur. What murmur? This lament is like a sea is breaking the tiny rocks on the breach. Now listen, this scene is from England. Remember Toru stayed in England? She's comparing the sound of England to the sound of India or the trees of England to the trees of India. When she hears a lament, like a sea breaking the tiny rocks of the beach, she feels that, you know, it is not the beach or it is not the sea breaking. It is the tree which is crying. Yes, it is the casuarina tree. So imagine it like this. Toru that is walking by the beach. She hears the water splashing on the pebbles, but she all of a sudden remembers the casuarina tree. It is her tree which is crying. Why is the tree crying? Because the poet is also crying. Why are both of them crying? Because they have lost their loved ones, their companions, their brother and sister. The tree is crying. The casuarina tree, just like the poet, is mourning the loss of her companions with a strange wail or a strange music. As if you know, the tree wants that this music should reach the land of the departed soul. It is said, no, there is a life and afterlife. So maybe the casuarina tree is wailing so that the sound may reach to the land of the departed soul where Toru's brother and sister are residing. Here the theme is pathos and philosophy. How philosophical Toru is now turning. Yes, let's begin with the fourth stanza of the poem. Let's read it first. Unknown, yet well known to the eye of faith. Ah, I have heard that wail far, far away in distant lands by many a sheltered bay. When slumbered in his cave the water writ and the waves gently kissed the classic shore of France or Italy. Beneath the moon where earth lay tranced in a dreamless swoon. And every time the music rose before mine inner vision rose a form sublime. Thy form, O tree, as in my happy prime I saw thee in my own loved native clime. Again, the poet, as I told you, she studied in France, Italy. She stayed in England. Now, how she is in France, Italy, in England, how she has been in the caves, but all she's remembering is the memory under the casuarina tree. Explanation. The poet has a deep connection with the casuarina tree. Her companions, her brother and sister, might not be with her physically. They might not be present with her, but spiritually they are still alive in the form of this tree. When Toru was far away from India, she heard this wail, this you know, strange music in far away distant lands by sheltered bays. She heard this wail when the water spirit slept in his cave. She heard this wail when the waves gently touched the shore of France and Italy. She heard this wail beneath the moon when the earth was dreamlessly sleeping. She has heard this wail, the wail of the Casuarina tree. It is alienation versus comfort. Toru is alienated in foreign land. Toru finds comfort in her native land. And then she says that whenever I hear this wail or music, it arouses the memory of the Casuarina tree as I saw it in my youth, in my native land. Here the theme is memory. With this, we are 
at the last stanza of the poem, Our Casbarina Tree. Let's read it. Therefore, I fain would consecrate a lay unto thy honor tree, beloved of those who now in blessed sleep for I repose. Dearer than life to me, alas, were they. Mayst thou be numbered when my days are done with deathless trees like those in Borrowdale, under whose awful branches lingered pale, quote, fear, trembling hope and death, the skeleton and time the shadow. And though weak the verse that would thy beauty feign, O oh, fain rehearse, may love defend thee from oblivion's curse. Don't get confused. It is very easy. I'm going to tell you everything what this stanza mean. The poet says that for all the stated reasons that she gave until now, she wishes to write something in honor of the Casbarina tree. Consecrate a lay unto thy honor. That is, I want to write a poem in your honor tree. Why? Because you are not just my beloved, but you are the beloved of my late companions who were very beloved to me. Further, the poet states that when I die, I want that you, Casuarina tree, should be counted among deathless, deathless trees. Like you should be immortal, such as those trees in Borrowdale. Here, there's an allusion to Wordsworth's poem named You Trees, where William Wordsworth spoke about these you trees which have lived so many years that they look deathless. Death cannot touch these yew trees. But just at the same time, Wordsworth, in his poem, Yew Trees, says for the awful branches, imagine if a person lives forever, how old and awful he will look. Same way Wordsworth wrote for these trees at Borrowdale, which are deathless for their awful branches, the lines that Wordsworth wrote were, fear, trembling, hope and death, the skeleton and time, the shadow. And just after these lines, Toru says that, Oh God, Wordsworth, your verses were great. My verses are weak. Though weak in verse, my verses, my poem is weak. Yet, I want to say that because of my prey, my power of love, this Casuarina tree will be protected from oblivion's curse. Toru is hopeful that the power of love will protect this Casuarina tree from oblivion's curse. What is oblivion's curse? That is from being forgotten forever. She does not want the Casuarina tree to be forgotten. She will die, but the tree should remain immortal in the form of memory. So here the theme is spirituality. We are done. How did you like it? Very metaphysical poem, right? Few poetic devices and figures of speech discussed in our Casuarina tree are first, simile. Examples like a huge python, baboon sits statue like alone, the water lily spring like slow, snow and mast. These are the examples of simile. Then there is metaphor also in the poem. Which metaphors? First, the giant wears the scarf. Second, trembling hope. Third, time, the shadow. Next poetic device, it is transferred epithet. Example is tree lament. It is not the tree which is lamenting or crying. It is the heart of the speaker, the poet, Toru Dat, which is crying. So this is an example of transferred epithet. Next figure of speech is personification. Example, the giant wears the scarf. Here the tree is the giant. Next is alliteration. Creeper climb, crimson cluster, sweet song. And last, assonance. In assonance, there is a repetition of E vowel sound in this line. Shall the tree be ever dear? And last, we should talk about imagery, very strong sensory imagery. Tell me when I was reading this poem, were you able to imagine the huge python, the crimson flowers, the coquila or the nightingale, the uh, water coming and crashing the stones on the beach? So much, the huge python creeper, crimson clusters, sweet song, yes, which overflow the garden. This all evokes a very vibrant sensory experience for the readers. And last, a little bit critical analysis of the poem. If we talk about the form of our Casarina tree, there are total 55 lines divided into five stanzas. That is, each stanza has 11 lines. And the rhyme scheme is A, B, B, A, 
C D D C E E E. So to make it easy, each stanza consists of an octave of eight lines. That is A B B A C D D C. This is an octave in the form of a sonnet. So this sonnet has two quatrains. Can you see A B B A C D D C? These have closed rhymes and a rhyming tercet follows at the end. Two quatrains, four four, and a rhyming tercet of three lines. Total eleven lines in each stanza. Next an analysis of the poem. Casuarina tree justifies T.S. Eliot's phrase of unified sensibility. Eliot meant by unified sensibility a fusion of thought and feeling. And when you read our Casuarina tree, you can very beautifully feel that Toru has fused her thought and feeling, her emotions, her memory in this poem, right? And in form, this poem represents romantic era. It's a nature poem. And in theme, this poem dives deep into life, death, and spirituality. We are done with our Casuarina tree. This is Hina from Team Walat. I hope you liked it. Take very good care of yourself. And if you liked it, you have to drop down a comment, subscribe to our channel, and share this poem with your friends and relatives. Bye-bye.